Well, this did look good about two seconds ago, and then the sun came back. <sighs> Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the best damn EDC, and today is the last day of 2022, and that means a lot of you guys, including myself, are reflecting on the year. How did it go? Did you meet all your goals? Was that a total failure? You know, reflecting on what happened in the year and also setting resolutions for what's to come, 2023. And that's not what this is about. Instead, this is me just kind of reflecting on the year and in doing so, realizing that my carry, my EDC, has changed pretty significantly in 2022. So I'm here to tell you about the five ways that my carry changed in 2022. And with that said, let's do the damn thing. So first and foremost, I have to say thank you. Just thank you all. This was a banner year for me. Um, we hit 300,000 subscribers here on the channel. I, I bought this cool little truck as well as my excursion, sold the AT4, which no, I don't regret it just to answer those questions again. Um, and I bought a house. I'm here on the corner of my property. This is like my little happy place. I have a fire pit over here. I drive the truck in, load some firewood. And this is my little happy place uh, that I've, I've not really built, but just kind of grown into. I've got plans for it, but not yet. All that's to say, none of this would be possible without you. So thank you guys for watching, subscribing, Patreon people, clicking the links in the description, anything and everything, even many of you who have now purchased from Carry Commission, I thank you all so, so much. I literally owe it all to you. So thank you guys for everything. But that aside, the way that my carry has changed this year, way number one is pretty significant and cool, different, interesting. I started carrying way more fixed blades. I carried a fixed blade a significant portion of this year. I got this one right here, the AK-1 at Blade Show, Yannick of Daily Customs gifted it to me. This is a custom one. It's really, really, really sick for an EDC fixed blade. I like it a lot. You can customize the handles and do lots of lots of different things to it. Uh, but the killer feature of this one is this pocket sheath. I can't do a fixed blade for EDC without a pocket sheath. But I, I think this came from going to Georgia Bushcraft and seeing all these people carrying fixed blades, trying them myself, carrying more of them. I've always had fixed blades, but I've never really used them or carried them as much as folders. And I still think I'm more of a folder guy. I think they're still more convenient, but there are definite benefits to carrying a fixed blade over a folder and vice versa, right? They both have strengths and weaknesses, but I can appreciate it. I just cannot carry a fixed blade if it does not have a pocket sheath. The other one I carried a ton this year was the Griffin Co. Scout 2.5. And I also carried, it doesn't have a pocket sheath, but I carried it a significant amount. That was the Schwartz uh, Overland. That that knife is really, really, really sick. But yeah, carried tons of fixed blades this year, which is something that I've never really done in the past. If you watched my last video, you probably already know this, but one of the other major ways my carry has changed this year is I started carrying fountain pens. So this one comes from the sponsor of today's video, Big Idea Design. Big Idea Design specializes in making really awesome titanium pocket tools, like one of my all-time favorite pieces of gear, the TPT Slide. They also make the Bit Bar, Bit Bar Inline, and the Everyday Screwdriver, which are very clever and convenient takes on what would otherwise be a very boring thing to carry in your pocket. More recently, and after many years, Big Idea Design also introduced an upgraded Bit Bar, the Bit Bar 2, and a titanium pry bar. Some of the upgrades that you'll find on the Bitbar 2 is an actual thumb slide to advance the bits that are stored in the handle, as well as an additional driver on the front corner, which is an angle driver, and a deep carry pocket clip. And the TI pry bar is exactly what it sounds like. It is a pry bar made of titanium with lots of little tiny design cues that make it really cool, as well as a deep carry clip and these little sliding magnets for fidgeting, which are very addictive. But arguably what Big Idea Design is known for the most are their pins. There are many different versions of pins that all take tons and tons of different refills. With Big Idea Design, instead of having to choose a pin that accommodates the refill that you like, you can choose the pin that you like and then put your favorite refill in their pin, which is really neat. But they've even further improved their designs by offering some slim versions of the pins. So there's a slim bolt action and a slim clip they still accommodate tons of different refills, but all of that mechanism to accommodate the different sizes of refills is done on the inside, which is extremely sleek and clever. And of course, one of my favorite additions from Big Edit Design this year is 
the Fountain EDC. This is a pull cap style fountain pen with a Bach 180 stainless steel extra fine nib and a Kaveco mini converter on the inside. And all of the pens from Big Edit Design come in the same materials and finishes. You have titanium and raw blasted or DLC coated, as well as copper, brass, and zirconium. And if you want to spice things up even further, you can add a Timascus clip to your pen as well. Big Edit Design is always doing new and cool things, and they've added so much to their catalog this year, including a watch. They're really doing some awesome stuff, so if you want to check out everything they're doing, hit the link in the description down below. And if you use coupon code carry on at checkout, you'll get 10% off your order. And once again, I want to thank Big Idea Design for sponsoring this video. But yeah, my friends over at Big Idea Design sent the Fountain EDC over to me before it came out. I threw it in the pocket just to see if I could maybe finally get around to liking it. And then a few days later, I realized I'm still carrying it, still using it. I like this and it's probably going to stay in my pocket. And it has every single day since they sent it to me five, six months ago. I don't really know. And then they sent this one in the mail earlier this week. This is the Zirconium Fountain EDC, and it is sick. Uh, thank you guys for sending over Zirconium, because you guys you guys know I'm a sucker for Zirconium. But yeah, fountain pens. Uh, I tried a Kaveco Lily put, and I never could get into it. I just, I tried several different nibs. I tried a lot of different things. I could never get it to write well. I'm left-handed, which means I have to push more than I pull when I write, and I also smudge really bad, but I've not had any issues with the nib on this, which is a Bach nib. I've not had any issues with it, and I don't know if it's the nib or what, but there is some significant change that made this work better for me than the Kaveco Lilliput and the other two or three fountain pens I've tried in the past, and uh, whatever it was, it clicked, and I really like this thing. So, fountain pen is the new daily. The third way my carry has changed was actually kind of a surprise to me. I didn't even realize it until I sat down and started planning this video out, but if you look at these knives right here, you'll notice that something's missing. I don't carry lanyards or tie lanyards on my knives anymore for some reason. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, I flipped this around. So the AK-1 has a lanyard hole or lanyard backspacer. It can be flipped around and it can be flush or a lanyard hole. It's just this little spacer that goes in there. I flipped it around because I didn't have a lanyard on it. And then I realized I don't have a lanyard on many of my knives anymore. I took it off the Umnimzan and yeah, I just, I don't know why. I just stopped. So, uh, yeah, that's a small change, but it's one that just definitely happened this year, and I don't know why, but yeah, I don't really tie lanyards on my knives anymore. Maybe from time to time, especially if it's a really small knife, but for the most part, I don't. The fourth way that my carry has changed this year is my least favorite. So, last year, maybe the year before, the way that my carry had changed most significantly was that I stopped carrying keys. I had a smart lock at my house. My truck was the AT4, which had keyless entry and keyless start, just a push button start. And I didn't really need keys. My office has a key code, like I just didn't need them. I had a key for my PO box and then backups in case, you know, the deadbolt on my, my smart lock died, whatever it may be, I had those. So I'd kept the fob in my pocket, in my fifth pocket, and then I kept the other keys in my backpack and that was it. I, I didn't carry keys with me every day sold the AT4, and now I have a 20-year-old excursion and a 30-year-old sandbar. I also bought a house, and we do have smart locks, but not on the door that I actually use. <laughs> but all of that is to say that I have to carry keys again, and I hate it. I really, truly hate it. The only bright side is that the sandbar has a key that fits inside my key organizer, which is super nice, but I still hate keys. And without buying a newer vehicle, which I don't really have any plans to do, I'm stuck with keys sick and the fifth and final way that my carry changed this year is that for the first time in four years since i started this channel over four years actually i actually have an edc well for the most part like this year as if you watch the last video that's the gear i carried most of the year and not much changed i changed my knife more than anything my watches i'd rotate from time to time i changed wallets a few times in the year but always went back to the same one same with flashlights, just flip-flop back and forth between two different ones. For the most part, my carry stayed the same all year. And of course, I carry different things for different videos sometimes and testing and whatever, and I'll try some new stuff from time to time. But for the most part, my carry was an actual everyday carry. I wake up and put the same stuff in my pockets pretty much every single day. And that's nice, not having to think about what you're carrying or decide which knife or wallet or whatever. That's really nice, but 
Pro tip, if you want an everyday carry, don't start an everyday carry YouTube channel or an everyday carry store because now, after finally having an everyday carry, I relaunched carry commission, which means that I'm looking for stuff to put in my store, which means that I have to test out stuff again, which means I am rotating gear again, only in the last two months. So for the most part this year, my carry stayed the same. However, in November, I started just sprinkling in things that I wouldn't normally carry just because I feel like I need to know whether they're good enough to put in carry commission. So here we are, full circle. It was good while it lasted, but that's it. That's how my carry changed in 2022. And uh, 2023, I really don't know what to expect in terms of everyday carry. This industry has just been bursting at the seams. New people coming out of the woodwork and new brands and products. It's really hard to keep up with everything. Um, so as, as you guys may have noticed, I've kind of taken a step back and just tried to watch from afar, see what's happening. And man, it is breakneck speeds on everything. New knives, new flashlights, new everything. Brands that I've never heard of are now like popular. Like it's just in just the last several months, it's been really tough to keep up. But I mean, this is... This is my job, so I have to stay on top of it. So how did yours change? What changed? Did you start carrying more? Did you start rotating more? Stop rotating so much? Did you get rid of all the stuff and just have a core EDC? I'm really interested to know. And uh, for me, I think one of the things that I'd like to do in the next month or two is just offload all this stuff that I never carry anymore because I have so much stuff. So maybe I'll do a fire cell in the Discord or something. I'm not 100% sure, but... I definitely feel like I should declutter a little bit and start fresh in 2023. But with that said, 2023, I'm, I'm super pumped for next year and what's to come. I feel like I've gotten through this funk and I'm in a good place. I'm very excited. I, I'm really excited to start digging into this thing and the excursion and finally, finally, truly doing the LS swap on the Land Rover. But I have this shop at my house now and I've not used it. I've been here for seven or eight months and I've barely used that shop. So I'm going to take some time off, spend some time with my family, but I want to get this shop in working order so I can actually start working in this shop and, and showing you guys what I really have been wanting to do for the last eight or nine months. So I'm going to take some time off, decompress, relax a little bit, <laughs> finally, spend some time with my kids and my wife, and then I'll see you guys mid-January. So thank you again for an amazing year, one of the best years of my life by far. I cannot thank you enough. Happy New Year to everyone, and I'll see you guys soon. Until then, carry on.